What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Teddy Blackman, and man, welcome to Teddy's Universe. Um, whoa! So we just finished up season seven, episode five of Rick and Morty, and oh my goodness, man! I know I gave Rick and Morty some slack this season. I take everything back, man. Um, episode was a plus. Um, all I wanted was for them to get back to the story and man did they do it in a doozy um this was action-packed non-stop your typical classic rick and morty episode probably the best episode of the entire series in my opinion i know people have others and whatnot um so we're gonna get into the good the bad and break down the episode five if you want to avoid spoilers, click off the video because we're about to get completely into this video, unpacked it. Um, so I just watched the video twice. And the video starts off with what seems like a, a Rick and Morty argument, but turns out it's a flashback to how Evil Morty became Evil Morty. Well, Evil Morty. Um, to how he became Evil Morty and how he, um, you know rose to prominence, took over the Citadel, brought down the Century Five Night Curve, and uh, went to his own place afterwards, like we remember at the end of Season 5, I want to say. Um, so, it pans, it takes us to a, a part where he's, um, he's on a, a planet, and he's trying to get this crystal. He ends up killing, like, a monster that breaks down into these crystals, and he grabs the crystals, takes it back to his place, puts it in the machine to um, basically make the sky like green screen like to explain it. And then once that happened, he turned the green screen. Obviously, it was pink or purple in the episode. It was pink in the episode. But obviously, he's taking the uh, the green screen and he turns it into like a nice sunset. Um, however, uh, monsters penetrate his planet, which was thought to have a force build up. And he trying to figure out how it happened and the obstruction is coming from the actual rick and morty um sub they're at a sub base doing something where they're trying to um uh fracking the the finite curve is what they called it to take out all the rick prime clones and that's what they were doing but it was causing the obstruction to evil morty so evil morty drops in and we haven't seen evil morty since about um I'm going to say the end of season five. Once I seen Evil Morty was here and it was about the pursuit of Rick Prime, I knew we were in for a great episode. I knew we were in Now I didn't know to the extent of the episode what we were going to see happen, but I knew we were in for something like what I've been asking for the whole season, which was to get back to the story. Um, the episodes of, you know, the Jericki episode was pretty cool. Um, obviously, a lot of people were ranting and raving about the Spaghetti episode. Um, I like the song in it, so I'm one of those people. But get back to the storyline. He's been hunting Rick Prime for about, you know, seven seasons. Let's get back to that. And boy, did they. So the un I'm calling it the unholy alliance between Evil Morty and Rick, C-137, which is the Rick and Morty, uh, the main character of the show. Um, it's crazy to think that we got to see them team up. Um, also little tidbits is that when they do team up, they do locate the actual Rick prime and they Rick rushes into a spaceship and he heads to the location saying he's going to destroy his nemesis. And he tells, um, Morty to stay behind, and he tells Evil Morty to stay out of his way, because he's assuming that Evil Morty's going to follow him, which he ended up doing. Um, so Evil Morty ended up saying that he's going, obviously, to follow him, and he invites regular Morty to come with him um, after a little comedic relief in the situation. They both end up at the place, and so what happens is, obviously, it's a booby trap. And they're sent at this place where other Ricks have been hunting Rick Prime and they've been killing some of the Rick Prime decoys. But now they're all like in this box, you know what I'm saying, so to speak. And so the Rick Prime uh, over the computer, obviously a pre-recorded message, is saying that 
only one uh Rick can get his wife back because this is the whole story of Rick Prime killing the regular Rick's wife, and he's been hunting them down ever since. So they have to kill each other, and the last one standing will get their wife back. So obviously there's some cool, cool, cool Ricks. As you can see in the top right uh picture here, um, there's he he was a menace. This one that has the five o'clock shadow and uh, the kind of long hair here going down with the collar popped up. Absolute menace. But um, regular Rick and Evil Morty ended up jumping this guy and killing him. And they ended up obviously killing all the rest of the Ricks. And they were killing each other, by the way, or whatever. So we're down to, you know, our Rick and the two Mortys, basically. And so obviously he's not going to get his wife back because uh, Rick Prime says that your wife is gone. You know, when I make weapons, they actually work. So there's no way around that. However, here she is. You know what I'm saying? And it's um, an atom bomb with his wife's face on it. And she's talking and, you know, they basically destroy and disarm the bomb so it don't cause no major problems or anything like that. Um, Now, tab, tab, tidbit, throughout this whole entire episode, it's actually kind of weird to see Rick not only have someone in the same episode who's just as smart as him or maybe smarter than him, but to have two characters who's on par with him and maybe even smarter than him. Now, we know Rick Prime was ahead of regular Rick because it wouldn't have took him so long to track him down if he wasn't ahead of him. But having Evil Morty here, too, from a different spectrum, be on par with him it's just it just it makes rick almost feel like regular you know what i'm saying and so with the whole ordeal going down they finally run into the real rick prime and this is where shit get crazy so they have you know this standoff um obviously rick prime has more clones that pop up and they're like destroying all the clones and obviously it gets to a point where you know we're going to have Rick Prime versus Rick. And this is what we've been waiting for. And they're going, you know, punch for punch, kick for kick, gadget for gadget. They're really fighting. But obviously Rick Prime gets the better of um Rick. Uh, to the point where I think he's I think he's killed him almost. Not killed him, but had him on the brink of he was unconscious with his guts all spilled out and all that. That type of stuff. So um what's happening is luckily and when I say luckily, luckily, I guess this would have been the only way this would have had to happen. Uh, earlier in one of my reviews, I was like, maybe if they did the Jericky thing, that, if that was like a thing, that could have beat Rick Prime. Because Jericky was pretty much perfect in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Um, however, this was the only logical way to do things. Obviously, Morty is not good enough um, to help Rick defeat Rick Prime. But bringing in Evil Morty makes this more than capable to be accomplished. So in the midst of them fighting and in the midst of Rick getting destroyed, so to speak, um, Rick Prime turns around and he sees Morty. And he was like, hey, my original grandson, which confirms that um, the Morty that's with Rick is Rick Prime's grandson, which is crazy to think about. Very heavily, heavily speculated, but now confirmed. So, um... You know, Morty's doing the OGs, and Rick Prime's like, yo, I've never, you know, done this to, you know, a Morty before. Do I just get it over with? Do do we have a conversation before I kill you? Like, what, what has to happen? And so when Morty starts to stutter, he then hits his eye, and it shoots Rick Prime with the some type of a tranquilizer type of thing, and boom, turns out, and once he, like, collapses, he puts the eye patch back on, which confirms, like, <laughs> this is evil. He was standing face-to-face -face with Evil Morty, and Evil Morty cooked up a plan, which was so simple, by the way, to take down Rick Prime. Um, so what happens now is the other Morty wakes up with the eye patch on. He has an eye patch on. And he was like, hey, why am I wearing the eye patch? And he was like... I just pulled the oldest trick in the book or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But thanks for the assist, though. 
So he drags uh, Rick, even more, he drags Rick Prime into a room, and he got him hooked up to these wires and all of that, and he's destroying all of Rick Prime's clones and all the infinite universes to single this down to the last Rick Prime. He does that. Um, he takes uh, his schematic brain waves and brain curves and all of that, and Rick Prime's telling him, hey, man, you, you, uh, I know you want to make yourself powerful or something like that, but these are made for uh, strictly for adults. And Evil Morty's like, yeah, I know. So he drags in the carcass of, uh, you know, our Rick. And he has, like, you know how the hospital do, like, the rubbing things and they clear. So he has, like, those. They're wireless, obviously. And he does it, you know, rubs it, puts it on Rick, and shocks Rick back to life. But he's injecting Rick with the Rick Prime schematics and stuff like that. So when Rick wakes up, you know, he regenerates and all of this stuff. He's saying, you know, oh, what's going on? What's going on? And Evil Morty's basically just like, you know what's going on. Here you go. Have at it. And he has Rick Prime tied to a chair in the room. Evil Morty leaves, closes the door, and boom. So while Rick starts to beat up Rick Prime, and Rick Prime is basically, I guess he knows he's defeated here. And um, I'm assuming Evil Morty probably sapped Rick Prime of his powers. That would be the only thing that would make sense here because Rick, Rick Prime's been, he's been like a, a million gadgets, a super like kung fu type fighter. You know what I'm saying? Like he transforms into things. So him doing none of this right now, I just assume like Evil Morty also took his like powers or something along with downloading and taking them schematics or maybe he took the schematics out of him and put it into regular rick maybe that's what it was um and so which is going to lead me to a twist i want to get into some possible like plot twists later on um so what ended up happening is obviously rick kills rick prime but while they, while he's doing it, there's a conversation going on between Morty and Evil Morty, which is nothing, you know, too important. But it's cool to see, like, you know, Evil Morty not really be evil, but he has this tag of being evil because he just doesn't like to put up with what the regular Morty's put up with. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, so that, that about wraps that up. Um, obviously, Rick comes out, as you can see in this top uh, left, picture not well the middle left picture the middle top picture my bad um rick comes out covered in blood and regular morty asks him is he dead and evil morty says well that's not an alive amount of blood you know spattered over him and so rick is completely like stone faced as you can see and silent and evil morty asks rick well you you said you did what you set out to do um do you feel better and rick was just looking and he was like yeah it doesn't make you feel any better does it and that's how it that's how it normally always go you know and so then uh evil more is also saying he had the power to destroy all the ricks um across the finite curve now because i guess he must have took some of the schematics too from rick prime and um regular morty says well why are you threatening to do it why don't you just do it and then Evil Morty says, because I don't need, like, some vengeful summers to come after me. You know what I'm saying? So he's just going to leave it how it is. But he expects everybody to leave him alone when he, you know, goes back to his place. He then opens the gold portal and exits back to wherever he's going. I'm assuming his planet that he was on. And um, regular Morty asks Rick, is he okay? Rick looks at him and says, yeah. Emotionally, emotional list says, yeah. And so then Morty starts to recap how great the adventure was, but then it starts to like mumble together. Words start to mumble and blur as you can see, like Rick is just staring off into the distance. So he's basically tuning Morty out and it gives us like jump shots to jump cuts to them back at home in the garage and Rick with the stone face. Um, them at the dinner table, Rick with the stone face, him on the couch watching TV with the stone face. And yeah, it just ends like that. Um, you know what I'm saying? So obviously he said he did what he set out to do, which was avenge his wife's death. Um, now the plot twist I was going to get into is like 
did did Evil Morty turn Rick into like one of his little robot clone Ricks again? Because that's what happened at the very beginning. You know what I'm saying? So did he do that again? Is that why he's so emotionalist? Um, or is it just that it was all over and he didn't feel like the justification that he thought he was going to feel? He set out to do something and once he done it, now it's like, Maybe there's no need to exist anymore. There's no need for, you know, nothing anymore. He literally was like stone-faced the rest of the episode. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Um, another plot twist I was thinking is like maybe secretly Rick Prime and Evil Morty were a tag team. Because that conversation was had when um, Evil Morty was downloading Rick Prime schematics. Um, Rick Prime was super impressed with Evil Morty and was saying, hey, I never adopted the, the sidekick thing, but maybe you should, uh, you know, maybe we could do the whole Batman and Robin thing. And then Evil Morty's like, nah, I'm good. I don't need a Robin, <laughs> you know, and it was nice to see like that little, you know, ego versus ego moment. Um, but could he have made him the Robin? You know what I'm saying? Like, could he have did that? Like, secretly? Like, could he have switched, like, you know, the Rick's brainwaves? And so that was Rick Prime killing regular Rick or something like that? Who knows? We'll, we'll see. I'm interested to see because we're only halfway through the season. Um, But the storyline is completed. And I'm assuming it has to be a new story that arises. Because where do we go from here? The whole point of the show was for him to avenge his wife's death, and he did it halfway through the season. Unless there's something like Rick and Morty always has some type of plot twist. Always. Always, always, always. So even in this episode, there has to be something that we don't know yet or we miss or something like that. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm just interested to see where it goes from here. Um man this was an a plus episode and now i feel like the season is worth it and they can all the one-off episodes um that we was getting where it would they were mixing and matching characters one episode was about rick and jerry um the other one is about rick and this felt like this was the first episode of this season where it was a real Rick and Morty episode, you know what I'm saying? And it was ended up being a doozy. They pulled out the big guns. Evil Morty, Rick Prime, um, Assassin Rick, uh, you know, these other type of Rick. They they really did their thing with this one. Um, I'm interested to know how y'all feel about it though. So, you know, if you see this, you could drop a comment down in the comment section. You know. Like, share, subscribe. Really appreciate that. And, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, this is a complete breakdown of episode five, season seven. And I'm Teddy Blackman, and we are out of here.